five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, oh, hey, girl, hey, what one? Nothing. How are oh. you? <laughs> Tired. What's going on? How are you doing? I, I really don't have a lot to share with the people today. Uh, I just want to say thank you for all the kind affirmations and comments and letters and things that were written after our last episode. Um, sitting with it, trying to absorb it all. But um, yeah, just just on the move, want to go over here, child. Um, wish I had more to share, but that's how I'm you feeling. crying on the internet. <laughs> Embarrassing. I don't know if I've shared this on the podcast, but Antoinette knows that my <laughs> number one pet peeve is watching people cry on the internet, especially those that like set their phone up. And then cry into it. And the fact that I was crying, snot nose, tearing up. Mm, cry. Why are you uncomfortable? Rubbing your eyeballs all hard. I said, damn, she had to reach for a towel. I reached for it. That was an old do like head wrap, like <laughs> bonnet. That was an old chef's bonnet, as you <sighs> call it. Oh, the chef hat? Yeah. <laughs> This is what it was. Look at this. Mm. Oh, if you're on first of all, what in the Chef Boyardee? When did you ever have that much hair? That slips off your head every night. I'm irritated looking at this. (laughs) That's you know what that looks like. It looks like the mattress. It looks like a sheet. It looks like the fitted sheet. What are you doing? Are you sure it's not a fitted sheet to a very small bed? (laughs) Are you sure? Baby bed. Yeah, like I think it might be. Remember when I had my braids in? Remember when I had temp braids? Mm-hmm. Child. Jesus, be a protective style for Shanti. Um, How are you? Sorry that you're tired. Sorry, sorry that I'm I'm yawning. You know, I went to sleep very late, very late last night. Oh. Suffered from the insomnia. Yeah, it was weird. I um I've been feeling sad, and so I've been like, okay. When you feel sad, you got to move your body. So I went to hot yoga and for whatever reason, hot yoga really energized me. It was weird. I was in hot yoga and I kept thinking about Miss Pam and I was like, Miss Pam, are you here? And I was like talking to her in hot yoga because I was fitting to die in hot yoga. I was, I was on that mat. Like we had a different instructor. And so the sequence, like everything was just, it was pushing my body in a way that I wasn't used to. And... I was like, you know, I'm finna lay in this mat. All bodies are different. <laughs> you know how they are in yoga. Dude, it's your practice. I said, my practice is finna lay on this mat and stretch. <laughs> and I literally, something said, Antoinette, get up. Mm-hmm. I swear it did. Because I, I, I've been thinking about her a lot. Mm-hmm. And so I got up, child. And so I was energized. I was. I had so much energy. I got home. And I had a lot of work to do. I wasn't finished my my regular day job work. And I was working on um, the outline. And I had a little edible. And I took a sativa instead of an indica. And I was up. I was like, whoa, time to be productive to like 3 a.m. And then my phone, of course, started ringing at 7, which really irritated me. But um, So you tired? Yeah, so I'm tired. I'm tired. Playing fucking, it's not even Candy Crush. Shout out to everybody that knows this game. What is this game? This The game is called Royal Match. If you are addicted to Royal Match, I'm y'all, I, I have shame. I spent $20 last game. night on Royal oh Match. God. I forgot about your little game. On Extra Lives. I can't stand myself. I spent $20 on the Royal Pass. And if you play Royal Match, you'll know what I'm talking about. Because I wanted additional bonus features and things, I was just a just a plan, <laughs> and so I need to put my phone across the room. But anyway, um, it's story time. People Let's say go. I'm a good storyteller. Let's go, internet story time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was running an errand today after work. So I, I'm like, okay, I gotta get back. I gotta get back. Uh, we had a call at seven. 7.30 rather. And so I'm like, I'm getting home. Now, 
I need to preface this with my phone is holding about a 40 minute charge at this point. This phone said mm-hmm. enough, get a new phone. And so I was like, okay, cool. So last weekend walked into my phone place. I said, Hey, I'm due for an upgrade. They said, cool, cool, cool. We don't have the phone you want, but we can ship it to your house. I said, amazing. Ship it to me. Bam. Left. Now, what I did not know was that there has to be a signature upon delivery. Of course. Well, my buzzer doesn't work. Mm, So UPS kept coming, ringing my buzzer. It didn't work. And then there's a little sticky downstairs so i raised hell with the phone company i raised hell with ups there's nothing anybody could do i said i'll just go pick it up where do you have it all right can you reroute it to a store what can you do everybody's like no 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 like the best we could do is you can wait it out until they finally say they cancel the delivery they get it back to us and then you can come pick it up from us you can reorder it and come pick it up from a store i said enough of this now so today all day shanti and I'm on calls going downstairs looking to see, propping the door open, put a, another sticky and said, hi, the buzzer doesn't work. I'm propping the door open. Please come up to blank floor all day. They said out for delivery should be there by 215. Never fucking came. I'm sick. Mm. I'm sick. My phone is not working. I rely on my phone during work. I really do heavily. And I can't play my Royal match at night. <laughs> my phone charger <laughs> is the long one that I have is so severed that I really couldn't have it by any kind of bedding or material, cloth material, because it might start a fire. So anyway, I have my priorities. I need this new phone. I'm I'm driving back up, right? Back to my spot from this errand. And I get a fucking email notification. Sorry we missed you. I said, oh. God, damn it. So now I'm like, all right. That's it. I just, it, it just is what it is. I mean, when I tell you, I've been peering out the window. I hold my laptop, look, wait for the UPS man. It's ridiculous. Girl, I pulled up on my block and saw that UPS truck down the block, past my apartment, but down the block. Cause you know, they got to stop at these big old apartment mm-hmm. buildings. Pulled up in front of the, <laughs> the truck and would not move and waited for the man to come out this building. He comes out and he's like, you need to move up. I have to go. I get out the car. I'm like, I'm sorry, sir. I'm scarfing food down my throat too. At the same time. I start choking on the piece of chicken I had in my mouth. You know how it goes down the wrong too? I'm like, (laughs) and he's looking at me like, get the fuck away from me. You got COVID. Like what's wrong with you? And so he won't talk to me. He just keeps beeping at me to move my car. And I'm like, no, I'm waving him down, but I'm also choking. This is fucking ridiculous. I'm not making this up. So then... I finally go up to him like, sir, you have my phone. He was like, what are you talking about? I said, I live right down there. You have my phone. You just you just tried to deliver it. I gave him the apartment number, gave him the building. He's like, okay, where's your ID? Give my ID. My ID has my old address on it. Oh, it's Nigga. It's nothing I could do, miss. I said, what you mean? What you mean it's nothing like you could do? And he's like, it's nothing I could do. You know, I was like, well, I can show you some other proof. Hold on. Let me go on. I can show you like. My car insurance. Oh no. He's not giving me my package. I know my package is in that truck. He's beeping at me to move. I said, This is where I'm going to be irrational. That's why I was flustered when I got on that call because I would not move. He is sitting on his horn. People are looking. I don't care. I'm like, Give me my phone. He was like, Miss. I, I could only give it to you if you're at your building. I said, if I'm at my building, would you have asked me for ID? I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have. I would have opened the door, signed, and you would have given me a pack, my package. And he was like, you're not at your building. And I said, sir, walk me to my building. My building is two blocks away. If you want to walk upstairs to my apartment so I can open the door and show you that I live there, but I need my phone. I'm not going to have my phone for probably three weeks by the time all of this mess is done. Just give me my phone. He's like, do I need to call the police? I said, you oh. really going to call the police on a black woman? We support y'all. We hold y'all down. I went there. So he's like chuckling at this point. And I'm like, you think it's funny that we're causing a scene like this? And you know my block is small. I said, sir, please. Was it cute? I'm, 
No, he wasn't. And it would have been, it probably would have been a little flirtatious if he was cute. I probably could have been like a love story. That's what we tell, you know, our kids or yeah. some shit. But he wasn't cute and he was older. And so finally he was like, what's your phone number? And I gave him the phone number and this motherfucker went in the back and passed me my phone. And I said, this is a lesson. Cause a scene. Call, be the villain, ladies. Ooh. Fuck that. When, when they tell you no, you say yes. Because you're being ridiculous. You got my shit back there and I want it. Okay? I love that for you, Antoinette. Thank you. Ten toes down. Got my phone. I have no idea how to set it up. I'm sure I will figure it out. It's Apple. And it's intuitive. It's I'll already connected playing. to you. You have Listen, a chip connected to you. It's just going to inside my become body. one with you. Yes, don't worry. I will be playing Royal Match this evening. Bitch, go to on bed. my new phone. Look at her. <laughs> she is into the mic, head tilted, ready, addicted, <laughs> unwell. Addicted. <laughs> I want to play it right now. Anyway, that's my UPS man story. I was a little frazzled and fumbling on our call, but I, I did the best I could after the commotion that I had caused. It was a commotion. So let that be a lesson. Well, listen, why don't you do us a favor? It's really easy, effortless. Yeah. Proves your 10 toes down for us and... Review, rate, and subscribe to our podcast. Wow. Share it if you can. Tell your people. We Listen, those little clips and memes and episodes that you guys share on your social media, it makes it sticky. And we appreciate it. We'd also appreciate if you became a patron on our Patreon, which is a subscription-based platform where you can see us live and in action Makeup off, looking like how God intended, <laughs> talking our shit. We also have exclusive content that you can't hear just through us talking in your ear draw, ear holes. So consider this Patreon, www. Backslash. Mm. No, go Jesus ahead and say that. I was on a roll for you months, and I stopped saying it. I never forgot. www.backslash.com. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> what the fuck? .org. .net. You're amazing. Do me a, it's www.patreon.com backslash around the world. Mm-hmm. Shanti, for mm-hmm. all the patrons, do me a favor. What? You are sitting so far back that your, you look, your head looks this big. You already got a small head. Come sit forward. Come closer <laughs> to the fucking computer. You got to lean back like you in a car. Go sliding. Also, Ooh. someone asked if that hat, if they can purchase it at Sable. <laughs> that ass. They were like, that hat is cute. I need that. It was a patron. Look at me. Look at like Felicia. I'm making it happen for you, queen. It's not on site right now. And it's like not seasonal anymore. So no, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. You won't be able to find it. <laughs> we'll have other hats available, but this is out of season now. Look at me. Felicia, looking like I could take your girl maybe. Oh, like I could play basketball a little bit. Are you being... Is that I problematic? I don't know. I can't, I, I don't it's, know look, It's giving masculine. It's giving study. What's going on outside your window? Is children everything okay? Laughing. Life is happening. Is that children? I thought it was dogs. Wow. <laughs> it sounded like little yip yip dogs chirping no, at each other. Yip yip kids. Like, I feel really sorry for Jolie in a lot of ways because do you know the delight and exhilaration of running the streets at night in the summer? Amazing. My nigga. Play a man. There's nothing hunt. like it. She in the house hunched over doodling. On her iPad? On her iPad or let her at some... let, get, let her get free. Let her go outside. She goes Shanti. outside and put... No, she don't want to go outside around here. And I'm not sure I want her to go outside around here. Because she's never experienced touch a girl, freak a girl. Oh, God. Why would... I was going to say jump rope. Why would that be? I'm happy she's not. But also, like... She Does she know how to a... jump? Can she double dutch? No. Do you know how to double dutch? Girl, I could turn. I get in a rope for two seconds and then I'm done. And last time I checked, you couldn't do it either. I'll double dutch you into a, into a tizzy. <laughs> you was trash I the last time I saw you. I was, I was inebriated. 
That was you was you were hyped to show me. That you was, was like, the beginning of the camera. end, if you remember, Antoinette. That was Afro Punk two thousand and something. No, you did it again up here or somewhere in Philly at a block party or something. I'm telling you, and you were you were like, I'm ashamed. Don't you remember that? Probably. But then I, I redeemed myself because I jumped again for uh, with Yaba. You were all right? Yaba can't jump either. The blackest oh, professional black girl don't know how to jump no rope. Because you Tricky. know what? It's a spectrum. And uh, <laughs> blackness is in a mono. Amen. Ashe. All right. We're 15 minutes in, so take us to hot shit. Well, Make good I, time. Well, I, we want to shout out our patrons from Patreon, don't you? I apologize. Go ahead, you do that, Queen. First and foremost, the God, Mr. Don. Don Dada. If you know who Mr. Don is, then you know. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. But he is the God. He is the, the prototype. prototype. He is the pinnacle of a man. When we say that we're looking for our Mr. Don, that's who we talking about. Okay. And it's no mistake that it's Don, like the Don. All right? <laughs> Number one. Alexandria, Darshan, Hayes, Little, oh, excuse me, Little, Filmmaker, Gloria, Leslie, accidentally wrote Gloria twice. So shout out to you. Two again. times? I actually love the name Gloria. I don't think it's, I think it's underutilized now. Seriously, Gloria? Like Gloria, Gloria. It's a beautiful name. You're That's right. A beautiful name. Gloria it feels good coming off the mouth. Yeah, makes you feel good, like God's glory. Also, I was looking at the Twitter, even though I don't like to be on there because of Elon Musk. And XD posed a very interesting question. He said, "Outside of Aretha Franklin, do you know anybody else named Aretha?" Nope. <laughs> right. It's dead. It's a dead, it's, it's. Was that anybody else's name? Like, was Aretha the, like. Of course. Unique That's... name back then, Aretha? Because it's just unique? so. Huh? I just said unique because I have a twitch. Oh, I see. But like, was Aretha like a, a unique name I or did so. everybody use it? Was unique the Keisha of her era? What? What? <laughs> All right. Wait, is it common? Are you saying it wasn't a you? Okay, you did ask that. Was it you? No, I'm name? saying it wasn't, it wasn't unique, a key. So that's it wasn't not a common. Yeah. Okay. okay. I feel like it was. I feel like it was commonplace. For real? Yeah. So why don't we know any other Arethas? The way we don't know no Debras. I know Debras. There's mad Debras. What you talking about? I don't know. I have to think about that. There's a there's a miss. There's another name. Why did all the Debras just catch a fucking stray? Relax. <laughs> Come on, take us into hot shit, y'all. TikTok is is crazy. Shout out to Bobby Flowers who sent me this via TikTok. Y'all need to look into the author Quan Mills. Let me read some of these titles that Mister Quan. <laughs> of the books that Mr. Kwan has written. Deadass. I even vetted this. I went on Amazon. These are available in Audible and paperback. Let me read some of these titles. This hoe got roaches in her crib. <laughs> Old thought next door. <laughs> Past is eat pussy too. No. This nigga got a small dick. <laughs> My psycho baby daddy. My psycho baby daddy too. <laughs> my baby mama is a loser what gutter the chicks do gutter things project whole dreams this is serious and let That's me tell you not something real yo yes Shanti, the internet no. they are for sale Juan mills they're for oh, mills sale. with a z yes it's mills with a z you gotta dive into the there. crazy intense and imaginative literary universe of Quan mills the prolific urban fiction author, captivating readers since 2017 with salacious, controversial, comedic, and thrilling stories. With a style uniquely ratchet and daring, his stories have taken social media by storm. Step into a realm where the impossible becomes possible and imagination knows no limits. Welcome to the madness and brilliance of Quan Mills. I gotta see if he has an Instagram now. Yeah, he does. He has 122,000 followers. Juan! 
<laughs> Quan needs to come on the podcast. I have so many questions. Let me tell you something. Quan has a 4.44 out of five stars on Amazon. <laughs> because we, 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 Oh my we... God. His best seller is old thought next door. <laughs> Look at the, please Google that and look at the, the cover art. Girl, I see it all. And I ain't gonna act like this is some brand, like this art is new to me. I've seen art like this many times on hood uh, liter literature. Let's he's talk also, about hood literature. He's pumping out these books like crazy. Boys, like three books came out in 2022, four he came said, out in 2021. How is he writing? Pastors now? eat pussy too. P-W-U-S-S-Y. This nigga oh, got a small dick. <laughs> this nigga got a small dick too. Wow. I didn't saw some volumes of that before, child. Mm. Well, that's my hot shit. <laughs> I'm upset. <laughs> that is not what hot shit is. <laughs> That That's is not what hot shit was that intended shit is to flaming. be. We have Mr. Don listening and watching us now. So you better Mr. type Don him probably out. looking it up to see if it's real too. He's probably <laughs> intrigued too. No, he's not. He would never do something like that. That angel. I wish I had something to counter. Let me look. I'm scrolling to my phone trying to find something else to push. You're like, I have nothing. Well, I thought you had some hot shit up there, but I deleted it because I didn't have a good experience yet. Oh, Remember I child. told you mm. I wanted to shout out a black business, but they fucked up, y'all. Showed up and they was they never opened the door. They was closed. <laughs> Even though I paid my money. They try they're trying to fix it. It's okay. Everything's okay. We're all human. Everything Oh, I have hot shit. There is an artist by the name of Hamza. H A M Z A A. Bridget Kelly actually put me on to her. And she has a song called Rush Out. And I love her voice. I need to deep dive into her because I don't know anything about her outside of just listening to this single, but it's been on repeat over and over. She's a beautiful soul. And apparently she listens to or heard See the Thing Is. And, you know, tagged us and thanked us for shouting out her song. And so she's an up and coming artist. She's got, oh, it's an EP out, Rush the EP, but the single is out as well. And she's super dope. And so I want to see her win. And I like her aesthetic too. I'm on her she's Instagram. She's cute. She fire. Yeah. Super cute. So anyway, check her out and please support this up and coming, beautiful singer doing her thing. Hallelujah. Being courageous. You know, doing her art. So shout out to her. Okay. Would you like to take a break? Lots to discuss. Lots to discuss on the other side of things. Would you like to sing? After these messages, we'll be right back. Boop. And we are back. So, as promised, here we are. Here we are. Politics is usually wow. We have to talk about Maui. Mm. Mm. Let's pause because I need to get the clip ready. Sorry. Monty, ignore this. We are not back from break yet. Ignore this. Chanti, can you, um, when we are back, put that drone in there. I'd be getting nervous when I got a double multitask, rather. Why are you Oh, it was 23 something. Seventeen. Um, oh, God. I just feel frazzled. Okay. Get this ready. Let me disconnect this. I have a new favorite. I think I have a new favorite newscaster. 
Shippo Creator is a low-code application development platform that has helped organizations of different sizes to modernize their IT. Build Sorry, custom Sheila. applications for your unique business needs faster using our intuitive drag-and-drop interface. Try Zoho I, I, I need to get YouTube without ads. Okay. <laughs> kind of for this. This is a little ridiculous for me now. We have some unfortunate updates from the Maui oh, fires. Officials updated the Okay. I'm ready. All right, let's go. And we're back. So, politics is usually wild. We have to talk about Maui. <sighs> Obviously, we all know that um, there were awful wildfires, fires in Maui that devastated the community. I think the death, yes, I know that the death toll is over 100 right now, still with missing folks millions upon millions of dollars if not a billion um of damage people's lives everything that imagine just like yourself right this is the shit that i do imagine your life your house your apartment all your stuff everything that you've accumulated over the years everything you've worked hard for the people that you love in your home your pets your memories your your pictures everything gone in a blink and you don't even know what's happening you just see fire you just you it, it's something out of a horror movie and all you can do is get yourself and run and many people jumped in water to escape this awful tragedy the coast guard was picking people up in boats trying to save them it was it's just horrific okay something that the tragedy in Maui is doing is that it's really highlighting the wealth gap that exists in this country. And especially um, we're going to center Hawaii right now. Um, it's interesting, the coverage on it, you know, there's a lot of people who, when they are covering it, there's a lot of white folks, not native folks, right. To the Island being interviewed it's a lot of like it just looks like oh people were vacationing or they bought a home there whatever the case is and it was in the new york times they're under fire right now um, for lack of a better word for highlighting a story about a maui like a survivor who they chronicled this person going back to their home and rummaging through basically the ashes looking for what they consider to be a precious um a precious artifact and it was a rolex and so a lot of people were just like why are you centering these very wealthy people on the island and and not discussing like not focusing in on the native folks that live there who like they don't have a fucking rolex to look for and the you know the person said well this rolex was gifted to me from my parents when i graduated from school it meant a lot to me and i'm sure it does it's a rolex the other person that's under fire and i want to play a cl clip because it's gonna kind of tie together what i'm trying to get at here is oprah and oprah went to the island um and was seen and videoed you know giving out pillows giving out towels and and even spoke on it. She, she took to her Instagram to talk about, you know, trying to help folks with their very basic needs and talking to them and trying to figure out what it is that they need. And I don't think, probably ha haven't said it in a long time, but I've always struggled with Oprah. I've always, I, I respect her. I like her. I know that she's worked hard. I know that she's a force to be reckoned with, but I struggle with someone who amassed that much wealth, even though she does so fucking much in her community because just like Jay, just like Beyonce, and for whatever reason, I can see it more with Oprah, maybe because I'm not, you know, she's not a musician and I just don't overlook it because I love her music and just want to celebrate her. But um, her very existence as a billionaire is harmful to communities. And I know I'll probably catch flack for that, but I just want to play this clip to try to help 
um, explain what I mean by that. It was completely unprecedented on the island. And coming into focus in the middle of all of that has been this focus on Oprah Winfrey, who came out you know, supportive, wanting to be helpful in the wake of the fire, but in doing so, announced that she had, I think, thousands of acres uh, of land in Maui, which raised the question, you know, why are there so many people who are not Native Hawaiian who are able to buy up so much land when the local population has been pushed to the margins? It's very expensive to live in Hawaii. So much has to be imported to the island. And because of tourism, it can make it very difficult for people who are Native to live there, to ever buy land there, to own homes there, especially when people with enormous means have bought up so much of these islands for their personal recreation. So, you know, is, do we care more about Oprah offering a humanitarian helping hand here? Or is this an argument that she and people like her who have bought up so much of this land shouldn't have been there in the first place? What do you think about that? As someone who was born in Hawaii, especially. Um, And my parents very much so were er early, um, were that early wave of people that were like, oh, let's go to this beautiful place that's, of course, Mm -hmm. a part of America and live off the land and do this commune um, type of lifestyle, close to the land type of lifestyle. Um, And my mother still very much romanticizes and looks to Hawaii to be an escape Mm -hmm. from America and a space where they're, you know, they have the aloha and like that is a vibe, that is an energy, that is a way of life, it's a way of being um, that a lot of people come and gravitate towards. And I don't know if you appropriate, I don't know appropriate is the right word, um, given that it's a very much kind of like spiritual being, but definitely gravitate towards and try to adopt into their way of being. So I completely understand the native's frustration with Mm -hmm. it. Like not you coming again and taking my land and destroying my culture and segregating me because of the money that you have and the privilege that you have and the ways in which you can extract resources and continue to extract wealth from me and completely change the dynamic of it. It's a tourist's Right. Um, it's how the economy, right. you know, when, if, when them people are just minding their business, living their lives, the fact that you have such a lush and fertile land that you have to bring items in to maintain the population is so crazy to me. Like Hawaii, you can just throw a seed out and the food just grows. Right. The fact that they're importing food just shows the imbalance in, um, the population, the sustainability, and how these people have been saying this for years, from yeah. the jump. My mom and my sister, who are white, my dad not so much, but I think he probably was like, what are you doing here as well? But for years, Howleys, that's what they call white people. Howleys? Howleys. The Hawaiians have been very, very vocal about their dislike for Howley's there. My sister's yeah. experienced it. Like with the Howley, like you as a white person in this native population, you were gonna catch some slack. So this isn't like a new wave of radicalism. These people yeah, for no. years have wanted them out. And um, another, I mean, maybe this is a conspiracy, whatever, but there's lots of discussion about how this is also this this um, demolishing this land, demolishing these infrastructures. Although it's terrible, right? Mm-hmm. What it's also an opportunity for developers and for people that have the money to grab the land and to restructure and to completely, you know, oh, you your land's gone, your house is gone, you can't afford to rebuild. We can. And we are. Here's some, well, here's whatever money you have to replace that, or I'm just going to take it from you because you don't have your insurance can't afford. You know, you don't have the insurance claims or whatever the fuck tactics these folks do to do money grabs, and that's what a lot of natives are terrified of and suspicious of in the first place. That oh, the best way to resettle is let me let me burn this shit down. Wow. 
I, I hadn't heard that, but I, I don't, it doesn't surprise me that folks have that kind of suspicion. It's not like this country hasn't done that before where they've burned things down and claimed it as their own and repurposed it. And they just fucked up the rules. Oh, you don't have, you don't have the insurance for it. Oh, you don't have the papers for this. Oh, you can't prove it's yours. I can prove it's mine. Let me buy you out. Mm. Let me remake this entire city. Mm. I, I, I want to make sure that I'm, I should have done this before, but that clip, that's Brianna Joy Gray. Brianna, B-R-A-H-N-A. She's fantastic. She is on something called Rising. And it's a, the, the Hill, the Hill is a publication. Mm-hmm. But they also have a YouTube channel. And she is, she her co-host is Robbie Sauve, Sauve. And he is um, more right-leaning, you can tell by some of his commentary. And, and she's just so sharp. She does not let him get to her. She just states fact. She's poised. She's brilliant and thoughtful. And I... I want to see her on like huge platforms. I'm really championing this girl. I, I'm like obsessed with her. I hope that they don't come out and say that she fucked up too, but it was, I spent all day listening to her. So I just want to say blue, get down. What? Oh, oh. No, you just being... knocked that. I'm so sorry. My cat is just jumping on the, jumping on the desk and knocking. She just knocked my vitamin C powder all over the floor. I'm going to ignore it for now. Oh, it looks like co- cocaine. Um, okay. Uh, moving on but staying on Maui it doesn't shock me especially since President Biden is under fire Joseph Robinette fucking up it's getting tricky for Joey that's what this episode maybe needs to be called get tricky for Joey Um, Joey took four days to respond to the wildfires in Maui now we need to be very clear in case you were not aware Hawaii is definitely a part of the fucking United States of America. It is a state, okay? Now, a lot of people are likening this to Trump and Trump's response to Puerto Rico. That was, I think, terrible as well. Um, And some people are like, well, Puerto Rico's not a state. Well, it's still a fucking colony. So that's tricky and sad in in and of itself. But Joey is dead ass wrong for this. Took him four days to respond to the wildfires. And then there's a clip of him being asked by reporters while he's vacationing. He's took a little breaky break in Delaware and they're asking him about the wildfires. And I don't know if he heard them right because of everything going on with his son, Hunter Biden. We'll get into that. But he said no comment. And it's like, that is the most softball question. What do you think about what's happening in Maui? My prayers go out to the families. We're looking into how we can help them. All of our resources, any resource they need, they will have it. Like that is the easiest question. And he couldn't respond appropriately, which is just, I again, I don't know if he was not briefed. I don't know if he couldn't hear them. Briefed? Based on compassion, empathy, on concern. Did, like, did you did he know what was going on over there? Like, what's happening, Joey? I know you're on vacation, but uh, Joey. you got an iPhone, I'm sure. Anyway, then he went on to offer seven hundred uh, seven hundred dollar one time seven hundred dollar relief payment. <sighs> and stayed to, to, to do what? All, anyone and everyone who has lost. Their family members who have lost uh, their possessions, their home, they find themselves unhoused, that need aid. $700 one-time payment. The disrespect. He goes on to say, we're laser focused on getting aid to survivors, including critical needs assistance, a one-time $700 payment per household, per household, not per person, offering relief during an unimaginably difficult time. So now... Many compared this offer unfavorably to the one, excuse me, to the $113 billion in aid that the Biden administration has sent over to Ukraine since February 2022 in support of the war effort, with a further $200 million approved just this Monday. Okay. So this is what a native person, a native Hawaii, uh, Hawaiian, 
Hawaiian. What do you yeah. say? Hawaiian? Hawaiian. Girl, shut up. Yeah. Anyway, can someone please explain how our government can send hundreds of billions to other countries, but chooses to pinch pennies when it comes to our own people in need? An entire town on U.S. soil has been destroyed overnight, and the best our government can do is $700. This is a part, and I wish they had their, na- their name. This is a person who campaigned for Biden on Hawaii. That's what they stated. Now, I wouldn't be me if I didn't play devil's advocate, even though I'm really pissed about this. Um, the devil's advocate approach is that Folks are saying that Biden helping Ukraine helps prevent World War III, basically. Oh my and god! That, listen, Get and the fuck out of here. Sorry, I don't. Okay. I actually don't disagree with that. Mm-hmm. I think that if Russia beats Ukraine and takes Ukraine over, that that spirals into something else because that then powers China, that empowers Russia in a very different way, and they also have so much influence on the east and in africa right now that it's like it's getting very tricky and it's getting it's getting hazy so i think it's a very delicate dance where we're we are participating in a proxy war we're at war we're just not saying we're at war but we're absolutely funding this war in order to prevent other things and for our own fucking interests um that's the devil's advocate approach i think that this is absolutely disgusting, this $700 payment. And, you know, a Trump responded, and then I want to let you talk. Trump responded with like a two minute long video on his Truth Social criticizing Joe Biden for this. I don't give a fuck about what Trump is talking about because honestly, the whole, like, stop, like Andrew Bates said it best. He was like, um, we won't be lectured by Republican officials in Washington who are doubling down on denial of climate crisis that this that is devastating the red and blue states who attempted to slash the wildfire response budget and who defended the Trump administration cutting Puerto Rico off from hurricane relief. Like, yeah, shut the fuck up. But the White House also points out that the response on the ground with FEMA have brought 5,000 meals, 75,000 liters of water, 5,000 cots, 10,000 blankets, the Coast Guard and the Navy's Third Fleet supported the response efforts, and the Marines provided Black Hawk, Black Hawk helicopters to fight fires. All of that feels like the bare minimum from the richest country in the world that has enough money, has enough billions of dollars to send over to Ukraine. I feel like you agree. Oh, yeah. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous. I, I don't really have much to say. I, I will say to be careful of the uh, feels out in my opinion is straight propaganda to mm-hmm. think that America is the one that's helping to prevent world war three. <laughs> that what? part, that part, that's straight <laughs> propaganda. What <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? If I China and Russia wants to beef up and start some shit, like, are you kidding me? Yeah, Girl. whatever. Sounds well, elaborate. Like, get the well, fuck out you, of here. What you mean? But are you kidding me? You're not finishing. I think talk. it's just propaganda to think that America has that much power. Number one, and it, and it is the big, it is the big. Um, what do you call that? What is that? Um, in the Oz, this idea, this identity that America has had and had and has built since the fifties around like being this the, the moral one, kind of conflict. yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're making the most money at this time. We're the richest in the nation. Oh, we're the best. And this idea that America is the best in the world and like, don't fuck with America. And we're keeping it all together. And our morals and our sense of democracy and our fairness, we are trying to maintain that and establish it in all of these barbaric, communist, irrational, violent nations in the world. And we'll do whatever we have to do to come and uphold that. Meanwhile, fucking Afghanistan, we just completely, like, what was that all about? They're right back to the, where they were when we started. And we wasted all of that money and time and lives and upended and really just traumatized those people. Yeah, I just, America's track record, I don't l- believe this notion of we're trying to keep democracy and we're trying to keep the peace to me that's straight double speak and similar to what you said there is a very strategic 
reason why America is supporting Ukraine. And I don't know it's because they want to keep the peace. They want to keep some kind of power. They are doing whatever they can to maintain it. But I think Russia and China scare the shit out of America. And I think Russia and China know that they scare the shit out of America. And they're like, oh, actually, you guys are not what you say you are. And eventually, you keep barking at us like... We've been spending a lot of time putting a lot of p- things in place, and it's not out of fear of you guys, and it's not out of uh, defense at this point. Some some point, they're going to be the aggressors, and I think America knows that and is doing whatever the fuck we can to, one, keep this air of, like, oh, we're the strong um, folks, and to do whatever they can in the in the global strategy and politics to, like, maintain this sense of power that is going through our hands like quicksand and we we are seeing it as the citizens the infrastructure is falling apart our health like we, it's just we're in trouble we're in trouble and uh i think the world is watching us in a lot of ways and we're trying to hold on and maintain but um yeah i don't know but I don't know if we're keeping it from World War Three. If it's gonna go down, then baby. I think um, the the final straw will be if China invades Taiwan. Mm. That's when all all hell's gonna break loose. All right, I'm trying to not be super leftist on this podcast, so we're gonna get into Hunter Biden as well. All right, we are going to criticize the left and make sure everybody's in the know. Hunter Biden. This is Joseph Robinette Biden's son. Hunter Biden is a headache, child. Hunter, Hunter he is just <laughs> oh. Kendall. Sit down. Listen, I'm gonna try to break this down in the simplest of ways. Hunter Biden is has been a target of the Republican Party. He has been under investigation. Now, the idea is that Hunter Biden was overseas, making a whole bunch of money, using his pop's name, doing corrupt shit. Okay, that's the easiest way to break this down. They're trying to figure out if Joseph Robinette Biden knew he was doing that and was willfully participating in it while he was vice president during the Barack Obama presidency, wielding his power with his son overseas to make money. So far, they have not uncovered anything linking Biden to knowing that his son was doing this. They also haven't proven that his son was actually doing this, even though we kind of all think he was. All right. So the counsel, David Weiss is the prosecutor. So this is a, uh, attorney appointed by president Trump. All right. This is a right wing Republican dude. He has been prosecuting coming up with a case against Hunter Biden. Now they said they reached a plea agreement because he has not he didn't find a smoking gun to put this dude in jail and the like. So they reached a plea agreement. Now, part of the plea agreement was an immuni- immunity clause saying basically once Hunter signs this agreement, he will no longer, we will no longer prosecute him for any of these crimes. It was like two misdemeanor, like tax violations. And he had um, lied about using drugs when he purchased a gun. Okay. Oh. That was what they got him on. So he was going to sign this plea deal and say, okay, cool. I'm taking a plea deal. No, no jail time, pay my fines, do my community service, whatever the case. And then y'all can't, y'all can't investigate me anymore. You have to leave me alone. The judge looks at this plea agreement and says, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished. <laughs> he said, this immunity deal is fucking crazy. Because why? Is it- be- because n- nobody gets immunity and like, no, you should be able to prosecute. If I find out something else about you, I'm going to prosecute you on it, especially since what we are um, investigating is has nothing to do with guns. It has nothing to do with drugs. It has to do with what the fuck you were doing overseas and if your daddy was involved in it. So this wide reaching immunity was viewed as a sweetheart deal, meaning this was all in favor of Hunter Biden. Mm-hmm. Now that 
sent red flags off to the Republican Party because they're like, hold up, David Weiss is one of us. He was a Trump appointee or appointed by Trump rather. So make this make sense. Like, why is he giving Hunter this great deal? The judge mm. squashed it. Judge said, you know what? Well, really what happened, the judge put pressure on David Weiss to explain why that immunity clause was in it. David Weiss switched up when when questioned and was like, oh, no, it's the immunity isn't that wide reaching. It's really just immunity based off of the charges that we're bringing him up on. Like, we won't look into his taxes and and the gun anymore. And Hunter was like, "Uh uh-uh, that's not what you told me. Oh, God, (laughs) tricky. Listen. And so the judge said, you know what? Y'all are embarrassing yourselves because this is a very highly publicized case. You came into my courtroom unprepared, saying that you had a deal. You don't have a deal. Go back and figure it out. They cannot reach a deal. So now Hunter is like, fuck it. We going to court. Oh. Terrible. Terrible for Joseph Robinette Biden. Because here's the deal. So once oh, this he happens, Kendall. he's a mess. Once this happens, David Weiss then goes to the attorney general and says, hey, 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 make me a special counsel, meaning give basically he's going to have more power and more wide reaching, like overarching power to investigate. He can move uh, more independently than he was before. And Merrick Garland said, "Okay, cool. Who Go is ahead. Mayor Garland? That's the attorney general. Sorry. He's, he said, whoever he asked, it doesn't matter. I don't want to complicate things with names. <laughs> Mayor in the I know. Now. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> so I'm trying to explain this simply. Are you following me? So when he asked to be a special counsel, this is the prosecutor dude. He asked, he was granted. They said, yes, go ahead. So now you have Joseph Robinette Biden's, okay? His Justice Department has a special investigation into his son. This is the first that time in history. That ridiculous. That doesn't even sound like that makes sense. And it's the person investigating was not, it's not a, a Joseph Robinette hire. It's a Trump hire. And the idea around this is that Joey is like, okay, you know what? I'm going to stay out of it. He doesn't comment on it because he's like, his main thing is everybody needs to follow the same laws, right? Especially since Trump is being indicted and we got to talk about how many indictments, he just got some more. I told you it was coming in Georgia. I, I, I damn near orgasm when that came out. It came out at like one o'clock in the morning. I was like, oh! So now his Justice Department is investigating his own son, but the person leading it has a whole lot of independence and is a Trump appointee. So- this kind of makes Joe look impartial, right? Because he's the person that he's leading with his integrity. He's he's positioned himself as the, the saving grace of the White House. He's going to restore it back to what it was. And like people are saying, well, this Joseph Robinette doesn't have any indictments. It's his son. But if they find some shit on Joe, it's going to look so bad because... He's positioned himself as like this moral compass, this right? This is terrible. And this is what despite we have leading our country. Fact, this is what we have to look forward well, to. Well, that's not they... fair because Joey has Girl. not done any. Let me finish. He has not done anything. That's like if your child starts to run amok, people going to be like, oh, well, don't support Sable. That's not fair. It's not you, right? Mm. So. No, it, there is no way that they're not going to reflect that back on me. There's I, no way. And you as a person is not going to be like, damn. That's my exact point. Ain't no way in hell. We we know that Hunter has had some issues now with substance abuse and mental health and all that. Hunter's been struggling for a while and Joey's been trying to help him. But here's the deal. This is crazy. Okay? and But the thing that frustrates me the most is that Trump is a real fucking criminal. But because he's positioned himself as a victim... His indictments just 
His base digs down deeper. You're attacking him. The Justice Department is attacking him. Yep, it's all about the narrative. It's all about the narrative. They did, they and done, what, they done, did a job. Boy. Listen, they did, they the did Republicans, Ooh. the Republicans are brilliant when it yeah. comes to narrative. The yep. Democrats never have their messaging or their narrative mm -hmm. together. Everything, any, ever, excuse me. They, they're just not as cunning. They're just not as, they're mm. not as awful. They just don't have their mess out, girl. All right. They're just not as smart. They're not as cunning. They're not as awful. They're just, they're just not as uh, savvy as these damn Republicans. It's, it blows my mind. And check this out. Then I'll shut up. The Republicans are saying that David Weiss the Trump appointee has been compromised. I'm like, how can you be compromised? He's supposed to be nonpartisan anyway. He's supposed to be just doing his job. It's not supposed to be about politics. They're saying he's been compromised because they're like, well, why did he offer him such a sweetheart deal? The Democrats got to him. There's no way that he would have offered that if he's not working with them on their side. So they're pissed about the special counsel appointment. So you ha literally, you have a Trump appointed attorney listed as the special counsel looking into Hunter Biden and Joey. And they're still not happy. And they're still saying that the Democrats are corrupt by having David Weiss as the, the they leader. Said he's a turncoat. They it's felt just, it. They said it's, something right here. It's brilliant. It's, it's absolutely brilliant on their part. So whether they get him or they don't, they've won. If they get them, they were right all along. If they don't, the Democrats got to them. And we should have a whole episode on how the Democrats should change. What can they possibly do? We should have people. Psst, I'm going to just watch because I don't know nothing. But we should have <laughs> some people that have some real insight to be like, girl. Because. Did that make you sense? You got white supremacy and capital. Like, you can stand 10 toes down in the Republican rhetoric because it aligns perf like it is the foundation for white supremacy and capitalism. Put yourself with the bootstraps. Niggers. Oh. Get together. <laughs> like what are Republicans gonna say to that? I don't know. Trump got indicted again. No oh boy. We don't need to talk about this. This nigga. Look it up, y'all. This is thug. Joseph Robinette week to get flamed. But couldn't couldn't let the week pass without talking about Trump getting indicted. He got indicted again oh, Rico. in Georgia. Rico. And the best part about this, well, there's two best parts. Not only did Trump get indicted, but 18 others got indicted. Some heavy hitters and some not so heavy hitters. And in a Rico case, the idea is that you get all the motherfuckers from the high level to the low level. And then you take the low level people and you flip them. And there's so many low level people involved in this indictment that the chances of them flipping them are very high, very high. And that just makes me wet. Um, in addition, it's poetic justice that it's a Rico case and that Rudy, Rudy Giuliani is also <laughs> indicted in it because he is the lawyer that made Rico oh so famous here in New York by getting rid of the mob. He's the Rico man. And then to be brought up on the charges that you like basically created, you kind of helped create Rico. You made it a standard. Oh, it's just beautiful. I just, you can't ask for more than that. So look that up folks. Shout out to that black woman. I cannot remember her name on yeah, the top of my head. She had young thug. Uh, What's her Giuliani name? Say her and, name. I don't know. Apologize. Oh, about come that. on. The District of VA, VA, Georgia, Rico. Hold on one moment. We don't have producers. This is us looking this shit up after work. Uh, Fanny Willis. Come on, Miss Fanny. Come on. And not to be mistaken with Fanny Lou Hamer. Let's go, sis. Fanny, Listen. she got a, a relic name. She got a real. She oh. got a, Talk she about Aretha. It. Where are the fannies at? Strong ass name, right? Shout out to her. She's brilliant. She's done these cases before. She's prosecuted these cases. This was a 90 some page indictment. I ain't read all that shit, but boy, was I happy. I love it. So, but Trump is still the victim and he's still the front runner for the Republican Party to lead the it's ticket. It's all about the narrative. 
It's all about, all the, about the marketing. Speaking about narrative, ready to get Uh-oh. into this? Let's go. Pop culture, the blind side. <laughs> now listen. Uh-oh. Did you see the blind side? The movie? No, but Me I think some wasn't right with it when I was younger. I said, I'm not invested in this. Let me tell you a story. My mom came home from the movie theater and she said, oh, you got this movie was amazing. <laughs> white mom. Oh, my white mom said, oh, it's just a story about loving people. They didn't see color. They just saw a kid that needed help. And look <laughs> at him. Oh, I'm, it's going to win awards. I'm telling you, it's so good. Now listen. Win awards, did. did. And, and what's her name? Sandra Bullock won her Oscar. Now, I, I don't believe that she needs to give it back. Black people going too far. She told a they good said, story. Sam, anybody involved? But then it's tricky because Sandra also has her story of adopting Wait, a black child. We're going to okay. get... I'm about to say, not the meta meta. Hmm. <laughs> we have to first say what happened. Okay, so here's the breakdown. The blind side story, if you're not aware, is about Michael... Hmm. Or, or that's how you say it. All right, this this story is so fucked up. I'm, I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. This story is fucked up. This young man came from, I believe it was Memphis, in the projects, in and out of foster care. Ran away from foster care so many times because it was a bad situation. The system pro- finally gave up on him. Third grade comes around and he's like, you know what? I have to get focused or I'm going to end up like everybody in my environment. Starts taking his ass to school. Lived on the street, like fended for himself. Like the story's crazy. He had athletic ability at a young age and was became a football player and a very good one. Has a, has a ring, won a Super Bowl with the Baltimore Ravens. Shout out to them. Okay. Now, along the way, A white couple who also has, I believe, two biological children, white children, they saw this young man and was like, let us save you. We are here. We see you. We see the potential in you, Mr. Savage. We're going to take you in and provide you civilization. Because that's that's basically what it is. Because the craziest part about the movie Mm -hmm. that I didn't see, because I was like, that's not my type of white people saving the world. It's more like Avenger shit that's not, yeah, yeah. you know, like I'm not I'm with realistic. this kind of white saviors. Yeah, yeah. Avatar, I even, mm-hmm. even though Love Avatar, Avatar is Avatar and the indigenous um, yeah, tricky. colonization. But I, yep. Avatar was tricky, trickier for me, but the Avengers never get rid of it. So they take him in and they basically look at him as that, as like, you're a savage, we can save you, but we not only can we save you, but we can make money off of you. Ooh. So then they, now, according to the movie, they they told these people this man was mentally challenged. Mm. That he couldn't hardly Who read. Who they tell that to? He couldn't write. This is how his character was portrayed in the movie. He was deeply shy and wounded. If you, I wish I had a clip. If you just listen to two minutes of that, the actor playing him in the movie, I would have been so offended. Michael was like, I can read. I can write. There's nothing like mentally delayed about me. And the fact that they spew that narrative was like weird. Okay. So he thinks that these are his adopted parents. Come to find out this man is 37 years old. He just found out that they're not. That instead, the papers that he signed a little past his 18th birthday, he signed a conservatorship. The same shit Britney Spears signed. Basically saying that they <laughs> have the rights to, to him make to, con- to make all his financial, financial decisions yeah. at all and, you know, sell his likeness and everything out. He is saying that he did not make money from that movie. They're saying, oh, no, no, we split everything evenly. Their biological kids have come out and said they made hundreds of thousands of dollars off the book alone. But Nobody knows how much money they made off the movie. He, these people saw the potential in this young man and literally had him sign over his life 
And he was like, there were plenty of families that did stuff for me. Yes, I'll never take it away that they gave me time, attention. They helped me. But like this narrative that they were like my savior is just not true. And now they're still profiting off of him. Still to this day. This is, this is, this is evil. This reminds me of the two white women, Jennifer and Sarah Hart, who adopted those six black kids. Mm, abused them, starved them. These children reached out multiple times to talk about the abuse and were sent back to them until they were driven off a cliff and murdered. These kids were, that was the picture of him hugging that cop, Mm -hmm. that iconic picture of him hugging the cop. Listen to me. Where he said more hugs or something like that, the little baby boy. And his faces of desperation and just like completely like, are you kidding me? This is nuts. This is evil. It's like, it's that same level of evil. Yeah. It's the same call. It's, it's the, it's the same, whatever is in folks to go over and take people's land and, and, and push them aside. And then it's the same thing that you can see someone and commodify them. Mm, and that's they're, the word. Because they're, they're not human. That's how you're you do it. You're not human. You're not human. You are a means to an end. And it's I, probably so in their bones that they're not even aware. It's not like a, um, maybe it is. I don't oh, know. Oh, they're but, aware. Because it's narrative. They were They were wise enough in that movie when they sold those movie rights to make him out to be a babbling buffoon before them. They knew that that needed to be in there. And, and it's what, it's not even true. I have, I just, there's too many clips today, but well, why he just realizing this now. He why just, he just speaking about this now. How I, old was he when the movie came out? Like, I don't know. I how, don't know. How could he well, not no, be aware of that not being? Wait, 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 he's been consistent when that movie came out, that that was not a correct depiction of him from day one. He was like, that is not, but he wasn't really involved with it. They were. He wasn't. That's his what about life the promo story. Of it? Conservatorship, baby. Wait a minute. I don't understand. That, I, he has been consistent in saying, that is not how I am. He even said that there were players on his team who thought he wouldn't be able to learn a playbook because they thought he couldn't read. And he had to be like, excuse me. I'm actually really intelligent and yes, I can read. And I actually was really disciplined and I got myself here too. Like I actually did pull myself up by my bootstraps. Yes, I had help from this family, financial help and access to things, but I, it was me who was determined. They didn't have to force me to come to the field to practice. They didn't have to force me to go to school. I wanted it. I just needed a foundation. Mm-mm. He mm. had it in him. Again, it's narrative. It's fucking narrative. They yeah. changed the narrative on him. And he didn't realize that he it was a conservative. A no, he thought these people until adopted him. February 2003. It says a prominent Memphis couple with a longstanding relationship to former NFL pay- player Michael Orr want to end the conservatorship that he's challenging in court. They intend to enter into a consent order to end the conservatorship. Mm. He he should he should get he so should much take money so from them. Much money. He, he wants a full account, dime. accounting of assets, considering his life story produced millions of dollars. Though he says he received nothing from the Oscar-nominated movie. What in the slavery? Mm-hmm. He accuses the toys of falsely representing themselves as his adoptive parents. Until February 2023. Oh! It was hurtful and part of a shakedown attempt. Now you're going to try to make him... Mm. Yeah, now they're playing... Prove what it. Are they doing? They're Prove playing it. the victim. They're Trump. Playing oh, the victim. man. Wow, white people are crazy. We tried to help him. We brought him into our home, the savage. That's their narrative. It's all about the narrative. That's the name the of the dumb, episode. dangerous black boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's oh, sickening. Prayers to him. That's so hurtful and so you don't have a safe. Even when you think you have a safe space, you don't have a safe space in the world. The trauma and the pain he might be dealing with. 
Can't imagine. Can't imagine. What season that thing? He went on to Michael or my brother. I'm so I hope he get all that money. I hope so too. Uh, they should be locked up. And they had him sign it like very, very um, close after his 18th birthday because he was he's an adult then. So he can't even say, oh, as a minor, they confused me. <laughs> so fucked up. I'm telling you, cunning, cunning, strategic, evil, evil. I don't, I don't know what the thing is in a person that can allow them to do something like that. It's and I don't ever want to know. They, I don't think they even know. It's just in them. Mm-mm. All right. Oh God, this, go ahead. You got this next one. You're crazy. <laughs> Did I write that? I didn't write that. I added it because you said it. You said you wanted to talk about it. Now, somebody done posted about Obama. They told us that they wanted us to talk about Obama might be a little bit gay. So, <laughs> Obama allegedly, uh, a, what do you call that? Um, a biographer? His brother. What are you talking about? Oh, a mm-hmm. biographer. His brother tweeted stuff. A too. more than 40 year old letter to an ex girlfriend recently resurfaced after Obama biographer David Garrow gave a long and winding interview on the one time commander in, in chief. So somehow or other, this um, biographer then got his hands on a letter from 1982 that Obama sent to his white girlfriend. Of course, she gave it up. Mm. Mm. Michelle would never. White people catch that. Hell, this episode. (laughs) (laughs) He wrote about his own androgynous mind. This is what he said. I quote. And the letter that he sent to his, to Alex McNear. Is this snitch. letter though? Is this letter has this been verified that he wrote this? Yeah, man, they have a they have an image of it, I believe. But you know, I, I don't know anything that's on been the internet. Verified? Has Obama said, "Yeah, I wrote that"? No, but I think what's her name said, "I I, I did, I received it." She oh. she done gave it to somebody. Alex is the one that then gave it to somebody. All but right, anyway, if it's true, it's true. What's I mean? This is what he said in quotes. In regard to homosexuality, oh, he's poetic. I must say that I believe this is an attempt to remove oneself from the present, a refusal perhaps to perpetuate the endless farce of earthly life. What does that mean? You see, I make love to men daily, but in the imagination. He was 21 years old when he wrote that. My mind is androgynous to a great extent, and I hope to make it more so until I can think in terms of people, not women as opposed to men. But in returning to the body, I see that I have been made a man, and physically in life, I choose to accept that contingency. It's it's actually giving a little homophobic, if anything. What? Wait, what? This is giving a little homophobic. He's basically saying, I got these feelings inside of me. I imagine it. But I feel like it's stopping me from being a human and doing the full. I don't know what is that. What you heard? Yeah, and that because he's in this male body, he's going to do what a man should do. Oh, so that's how you. Do it. A farce. I, I'm having a problem hearing you because your goddamn computer fan is so loud right now. We gotta get you a new computer, girl. That shit is like. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm, you gotta speak up. Yeah, it's really loud oh, right now. That's also why I asked you to come closer to the computer. <laughs> that joint going crazy right now. You had it on too long. He said, and he wants to think about, he wants to be, he wants to transcend the body. He doesn't want to think in terms of gender, right? So he has some radical thinking there. But he says when he returns back to his body, He's made him he's been made a man and physically in life I choose to accept that contingency. So I'm a man, so I'm gonna do what men do, basically, is what he said. And he said that I didn't know what farce means, but I have it here. He said A farce. You no, know what a farce is. Something that is a farce. But I don't understand why he uses that. A refusal I must say that I believe this is an attempt to remove myself from the present. A refusal, perhaps, to perpetuate the endless farce of earthly life. What does that mean? (laughs) Move away. I'm done with this. 
I don't care if Obama gay or not or bisexual, whatever the hell. I think it may, if anything, I was more impressed. I said, that's why I like you. I you- give it to you, but I don't know if he's being homophobic or being a little gay. Maybe two things can exist at once, child. Mm-hmm. I feel like I know gay people that are still. Listen, there's been a lot of conspiracies about Obama being gay. So have there? Yeah. What YouTube channels are you on? The deep dive tunnels. My <laughs> parents. I have the direct link to my crazy parents. So I I'll be honest. Yeah. This didn't, I could care less about this. I saw it and was like, oh, all right. I think he with Michelle. Anything, you love Michelle. Cool. I think more than anything, it's not that. It's the, it's the outing. If he were, if he were to have been the one to say that, it feels like an outing almost. Like why, why are we privy to this? His interior. Why did that woman give that up? Why did this oh, biographer yeah. choose to change, share it? If this feels like... When in doubt, the white woman was wrong. Say less. That's all you had to say. Agreed. You ain't had to share the, that personal information. I wonder what she got for it. A couple thousand. What'd you get? Who'd she give it to? TMZ? Who'd she give it to? Like, girl, sit down. Don't nobody know you. Ain't nobody think about you. Like, for what? That's my thing. For what? I wonder if Trump's people paid for her to do that. Oh. Listen, you watch House of Cards? Shit goes down. Obama and my new business living in a lap of money. He's another one that be in Hawaii all the time. He's he another colonizer on the low. Even wasn't he, he was born, born in Hawaii? Ho- <laughs> <I don't care. laughs> His Wait. family, well, he ain't a Hawaiian. Well, he kind of is, though, if he was born not there. indigenously. No, not indigenously, but he's, you're a Hawaiian. Technically, you're go born back. there. Yeah, let me go back there. <laughs> They would probably Malay. accept you. Brown privilege. You're welcome. Say aloha. They're going to be like, all right, Maybe come on. All right, last but not Oh, no, there's two things. I don't care as much about the other thing. I just thought it was funny. Kiki. I don't really care about this. Kiki is in Usher's new music video. <laughs> Starring as Usher. And the video, the name is called Boyfriend. It's the name of the video. I think this is brilliant. If it's anything Kiki going to do is make a dollar and capitalize off of some unfortunate circumstances. I think this girl is brilliant. She's so good in the video. She's There's nothing she can't do. I love her. I root for her. I love her. That's all I have to say. I don't care if it's disrespectful. I don't think she's still with that man. But if she is, shut up and let her get her coin. Let her star in this video. Kiki grew up. Kiki is what? Our age? Maybe a little younger. She grew up on Usher. Okay? She loves him. Imagine Usher asking you to be in his video and you are playing him and you dancing around and carrying on. What? Dream come true. Good for her. I love it. The lyrics are, somebody said that your boyfriend's looking for me. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Well, he should know I'm pretty easy to find. Just look for me wherever he sees you. Damn! <laughs> Even down to the lyrics. I wasn't going to read the lyrics because I, I peeped that and I was like, Ugh. Usher's messy. I said this. He said, <laughs> in your head because I'm not in your bed. You just imagine. Daydreaming about me. Oh, trying to be on your best behavior. behavior. Loving on me on the low. The taste of your thoughts. I can't wait until it's over. Let me tell you something. That baby name is Usher now. Okay. The baby's father is Usher. <laughs> That's it. That light just, skin baby is Usher and Kiki. I, I'm here for it. I, I don't know what else to say. This is like Usher. Usher and I share the same birthday. This is a beautiful. That's just a beautiful way to tell the boy to shut up. I just love it. I love that for her, especially if they're not together. You have somebody publicly try to shame you. And have your name all over the internet for weeks? What Watch me get my lick back, scheme. King. What if this is a scheme, though? You the way Cardi mm-hmm. did, talking about a Cardi and Offset when that song Rumors came out? Or Kim Kardashian when her mom pimped her out um, when she was younger to have sex tapes and made sure they were edited perfectly and set the release date and then act like it was all a lie. Why Dang. did that white woman just catch a stray? <laughs> <laughs> What in the why you did it like it's demonic <laughs> and winning? <laughs> Seemingly so. 
be the villain. Maybe that's the name of the episode. I don't know. Which no, one is it? We cannot do that. Be the villain? Be the villain is more, we get more clicks if it was be the villain. It's more provocative. I think it's be the villain. Anywho. Anywho, last but not least, another white woman catching the stray, but she deserves it. Brittany Mahomes, she irritated me. Do you know who I these did people not are? know who these people were? I thought that was from like a dating show when you first no, met No, girl. It. So Patrick Mahomes is probably, I hate to say this because Jalen Hurts is my guy. Shout out He's to the, the best Eagles. NFL player. He Relax. Won. He won. Oh, Relax. he won. He Relax. won for the whatever team. Relax. He biracial? Yes. That's his problem. Exactly. Exactly. So Patty, Patty, okay, won the Super Bowl against our Eagles. Okay. He is an amazing quarterback. He won on a busted foot, whatever. Super likable guy. You know, took a a contract that was team friendly, says all the right things, biracial, curly haired guy. If you listen to him talk and close your eyes, you would not know that he looks the way he looks is all to say. So his wife, Brittany, they were on a show where you have to, you know, it's like, do you, you and I play this kind of game. Like, what's my favorite this? Like, how well do we know each other? And he said, what is my go-to cheat meal? She said, fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> listen let me tell you something the listen. way i howled at that white woman screaming fried ch- chicken and then he was like no and she was like chicken fried steak no steak girl and he was like mexican he was steak. like mexican food <laughs> listen Ew, it should have been fried chicken get, get your shit together black twitter <laughs> that, that i was so happy black twitter twitter had me in stitches they were like, I don't know why, but there's something racist about this. Something feels wrong. <laughs> Just like, Brittany. Now, I want everybody to do yourselves a favor, all right? Go ahead and Google Brittany Mahomes. I see. All right? Go ahead and Google her. She's a good old white girl. And she oh, looks Brittany. just like the type of woman that would scream out fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's like it she right might there. Have to be a little bit of fried chicken. Girl. Anyway, I just have... It's... This I don't want to say no, she mean can't. things. I take that back. I no, she doesn't at all. But I, I don't want to say mean things about our brethren, about our biracial brethren. But well, listen, it didn't shock me that he didn't look upset. He looked more upset that she didn't know the food, not that she screamed out fried chicken. It didn't shock me that it didn't seem that he would understand the terrible optics of this. I don't know what's up with Patty. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> Somebody need to sit that man down and just explain some things to him. That's explain girl. some narrative. They love each other. They've been together, I think, since college. So yeah, shout out to them. For him. He said, I'm but with you. It's something about these biracial men. You just never quit. you either get him or Jesse Williams. You just it's a spectrum. Or and Drake. so is Drake. That is an enigma. I don't I don't get Drake because Drake is so corny to me, but the way that women throw panties and bras on the stage and fawn over him, I will never understand. In a million years. Talk about your panties in a minute. Too. I just don't think that's true. No, he's too light. If he was a milk dud and he was who he was, you would be like possibly. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know. There's something so corny about Drake. Also, did you see that, you know, the white girl that does the awkward videos? Did you see that? What's going on with that? She did the what? video with Drake in bed where yeah. she's like, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't know her name. You want to know how she did that? Wait, let me finish. She took okay. that video down and it's Why? rumored that her and her husband are getting a divorce. Because and everybody, of that? I have no idea. Because why do they need to be in bed? Because it's supposed to be awkward. I don't know. I don't know. But all I know is she paid her listeners. She said, anybody that has contact with a celebrity, I'll pay you $600. So these people, because of the way six degrees of separation, got her in contact with the first person. 
Then she paid and got in contact with Funny Marco, who's the black boy that cracks me up, and they had a really good interaction. Then Drake Funny started Marco following gets. her. And then she slid in his DMs and was like, do you want to do a video of me? He was like, sure. Did a video. Then she got with Little Yachty. All by her just she going said to her. She said she's uncomfortable. She was uncomfortable with her Little Yachty interview. I knew that was coming. Because she, she don't have no business making them fucking. Why? What? She's... No, she's saying it, her, her Yachty interview was uncomfortable. It's giving damsel in distress victim. Why would they do the Yachty do? I don't. I, I have no idea. I can't stomach but two. I, I really don't like her and Funny Marker. Marco. Who little Yachty is, if I'm being honest, I just know that I, she's. He was that. who I was calling little Yaki. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this episode's over. We tried. Listen, we tried was, with the pop culture, y'all. <laughs> All right, I, I we don't know these people. people. On. I was like, her little Yaki's new album. <laughs> yeah. She was like, you need a little Yachty, dumbass. I was like, I, I knew it was a little Yaki. You listen to little Yachty's album? It was yeah, good. I like his new album. I do. I like it. Wow. I, I think he just did some problematic shit with Sexy Red. I believe that they asked her what was the most awkward thing or or traumatic. What was the craziest thing that ever happened to you, I think they said. And she said she was raped and they were like, nah, something else. We didn't think he was going to go there. And they didn't like, oh, that's not funny. Please don't laugh. Shanti, take it back. They, they were like, and she said, oh, I was in a shootout. He was like, yeah, something more like that. Like, they wanted That's it not, to be provocative. Wait a minute, you said, did you say the, uh, go back to the question. They said I the believe, most traumatic thing? I, no, I believe. Or funny thing. No, I believe it was crazy. Like, you've been in a lot of crazy um, situations. What's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you? Something like that. Girl, and they were because, something provocative. Oh, she was like, no. I was raped before. Oh, and they, no. and I guess All of that is very layered as to why she why she would offer that as well. It was really upsetting, but they oh, caught black for... Th- this is why not everybody, like, can do this. It's like, somebody says that we to us, barely... you have to pivot. You have to pivot. You no longer can land the joke that you probably wanted to land or make it p- provocative or lighthearted. You have to pivot and hold space for that person. People just can't do that. Yaki. Well, it was little Yaki and somebody else. I don't know the other boy, but the other boy was like, oh, wow, damn. But he came back in. The other boy had some sense about him. and was like, also, like, sorry that happened to you. That's crazy. That's just not what we was looking for. But they kept it in. They kept this, that in. This, this, what's her name? Little Red? This phenomenon with her is so strange. They love it really her. does make me believe some of these conspiracy theories. <laughs> what, what? Like what? Why? She's going Why on tour are they pumping that? Why? <laughs> Why? Why not? Explain why not. From what? What has she proved as an artist and as a talent? Proven. What has she, what What does she have? First of all, I also wanted to say, uh, because I have ADHD. Hole. No, like what? Really? Is that the state of our music? Is you just need to have one provocative hit wonder. And I mean, even Cardi B and the Queen Megan the Good with WAP. Yeah, you have one like provocative good, like, song. What's that saying? <laughs> I'm like, oh. I'm 97 years old and I should not be talking. I said, why about I get What's this? that girl's name? Megan Thank the Stallion. Yeah, go ahead, keep going. I'm what did I call her? Good. Megan B. Good? Did I say Megan B. Good? <laughs> I don't know if you said the. I think you said Megan Good, but you could have said the. I can't hear because of your fans. Yes. In their marketing strategy, they created WAP in a lot of their songs. It's provocative, but those women have bars. They mm-hmm. have they have talent. You listen to their records, and it's like okay, listen, they've been they, working for years at this shit. They for said, years. They said Sexy Red has been working for years, and they said Sexy Red has an interesting flow. A different flow. She is now doing the rest of the Drake tour. She's the opener. They're, they're co-signing her. They love it. I'm concerned that, I'm concerned for her. I don't know if she's happy. Does she have the okay. team? Does she have the people? Like, what in the world? I just want to say, though, Fly and a Boss, the two girls that love. we love, are going on tour with Janelle Monet. Oh, so that's really wonderful. And maybe they don't deserve it either, because why would I say they deserve it? And then I don't say that for her. I'm unwell. I understand. I'm sexist. I'm biased. And um, 
and I apologize. I you see know. that. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, but no, something you crotchety. Know where I like, stand I don't want to hear that. With the booty hole brown song. That's know. what it is? They you love have it. People out here rapping their spitting that hot shit. I don't know. I have to be honest. I don't know any other sexy red song, so she could be amazing. Nor do I, so I apologize to you. Well, apologies to Megan the Good. <laughs> that your name was brought up in this. And Little Yaki will do better. And get. we need to maybe... Dead fo- serious. Try to gotta follow point. the shade Hi. room again. <laughs> we don't know these people's names. I think we're at that point. All right. All right. See you next week in a couple days. <laughs> Bye. We still don't know how to end these episodes. <laughs> oh, one thirty, right on the dot. That was perfect. Good. Still you very said, long. Megan, be good. I want to know if you said that so bad. Did you put the I, D in there? I did. Trying to, and I was hyped. Dead it's serious said, too. Meg, Cardi B and Megan, be good. <laughs> Is that the name? What's the name of this episode? What did I say it should be? Not it's all about the narrative. Nobody's going to be a villain. I think that's a very good through line. Be the villain? Mm -hmm. What are we talking about for the main topic? The two different, just random shit. Do you? Hot Hmm. topics. What I'm concerned about. Oh, I got my baboon thing. (laughs) You go off on yours. I don't care about this Doja Cat thing. I have no idea what that is. You have to walk me through that. But we have a lot of voicemails. Okay, good. Because maybe we don't do this one. Because I don't really... This might not be that I think that's a good idea. I like like that that one more. more. Well, whatever one you like more. My baboon by slap, though. I don't know. You don't seem... What did you call them last time? (laughs) Baboon. 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 (laughs) (laughs) You're like, yeah, I was listening about the baboon. (laughs) Baboon. I don't know what you said. (laughs) Well, I don't know either. Mm, I think I probably... Just had a brain. Baboon. <laughs> the baboon. <laughs> baboon. <laughs> All right, let me get these fucking voicemails ready before I get all frazzled and scared. I'd be so scared. I don't know why. Oh, I don't want that to be my me. update anymore. No, I should say it. All right, you ready?